Hey, Kevin Lawrence here, Coach Kevin, as a few of you know me to be. Hope you're having an awesome day today. A uh, couple of uh, things I want to share with you. First of all, really excited to announce um, the Jim Collins event. Came out in the newsletter yesterday, quite exciting. I want to show you something on it that was even more exciting. Some people found just for kicks here today. Sometimes we're moving quickly. But uh, we have our announcement about the event, which we're excited to do with uh, the growth faculty in Australia, who we've done many events with. My good friend Karen there does amazing things and done some other private events with Jim, which are awesome. But as the, you know, if we go down, it's the announcement, it's great. And the pricing, it's $295 regular, $245 for, for clients and, and people like yourself. And then 19 bucks if you get 10 plus, that was, a, that was a bit of an oops. It's supposed to be 195. I had a couple of people, in, including my mom saying, hey, that's an amazing deal. People were thinking maybe we're trying to get a million people in the room or something. So yeah, sorry, that's a typo. There'll be an announcement coming out. Uh, you'll see it below, uh, but it is going to be a great event. Jim is the master. He's the master researcher of building enduring great companies and just an amazing, amazing human being. Uh, a rare amazing human being actually <clears throat> this amazing mix of humility and drive a like a true level five um anyway so really excited about that uh the pricing is not quite as i mean the pricing is amazing as it is for a time with a guy like him um but yeah that's that's a a bit of a funny funny little quirk in our system just proving that uh we're human or, or maybe we're just testing if you're paying attention but a lot of people were paying attention this morning <laughs> lots of emails about that um, but one of the things I want to talk about today, I've been you know, doing some thinking as I'm writing my, my new book about, you know, what creates this, this, this performance and, and the tension, the good tension for us to perform. And I kind of broke down to three P's I came up with as I was doing some work yesterday. It's pain, pressure, and problems. These are the, you know, we've got the, the, the four P's of marketing, which we're not talking about, but, you know, it's like the three P's of performance. And there'll be some other things in there, but... But the thing is just noticing like this whole COVID thing created a bunch of pain and, 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 and pressure, but in many ways it created a lot of performance. We're seeing awesome things in companies, but sometimes we are always as human beings, we want to get comfortable and safe and relax. And we actually minimize the three P's that really help us to do our, our best work. And so the thing for you to, to think about today is, you know, as you're pushing to help your businesses get better is, how can those three P's be used properly, respectfully, in a way that creates growth? So for example, if you think of, of and I, there's a bit about this this week in, in the podcast we recorded too, which you'll see next week. Um, but if you look at elite sports teams, like F1 racing, they're so competitive, they're always using that pressure and the, the pain of losing to try and innovate and do better. You know, and we're, you know, there's also examples like we talked about in the podcast about like in, you know, the Tour de France, they had some really creative people that started putting batteries and motors on their bikes. It was in, there was 12 of them that did it in uh, 2015. Uh, and that's, now that's, that's innovation and pushing it a little bit too far. So in the work that we're doing, our job as leaders is to always keep raising the bar and creating a little bit more of that appropriate tension. So people have ideas of how to do it better, cheaper, faster, or in a way that the customers want. And again, this COVID thing helped with that. But the question for you is, how do you sustain that? How do you keep people focused on stepping it up? And you know, I'm thinking about you know, some of the CEOs that we work with are amazing at it, amazing. And that they do it through a combination of things like customer feedback and making sure customers are thrilled. If you don't have a system to, to capture how happy or unhappy your customers are, you're gonna assume you're doing a pretty good job and it reduces some of the tension because it's a sports game with no scoreboard. Or the employee engagement, how engaged or happy or unhappy your employees are helps executives and leaders to not get caught up in their own thinking and to remember that they've gotta keep those people engaged. Or performance metrics or KPIs. So you know, as I've thought about with the companies that we work with that have a very solid track record of continuing to scale, we have a lot of things that respectfully leverage those three P's of pain, pressure, and problems is that we always flush out brutal facts or the ugliest issues in our meetings. We, we, we want to talk about the tough stuff. We have data from customer sat, employee sat or satisfaction, um, performance metrics, and then how people performed against goals. So as I, as I thought about it, it's like, you know, the way we ro roll and run companies is closer to a higher level sports team and that's why the results are consistently at a higher level than, than the typical. 
And it's, there's always lots of great people in different companies, but it's these other things that help to create the appropriate tension, which creates the right focus so people focus on what matters most and are more likely to deliver. That's why in lots of the companies we work with, you see a lot of growth of people. Now we do executive education and some of that stuff and they read books and do training courses, but it's an environment that brings the best out of you. If you think back to the best places you've worked where you've grown the most, and I, I think of one of my clients, I think that grew me the most, there was pain, pressure, and problems. <laughs> and that environment was hard, but, but, I, but, I, but, I, but I really grew and um, even just caught up with one of those executives last week and we had a good chat about what it was like there at that company. And, 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 and the impact that we had and, and the amount the company grew and the value of the company grew, darn, it was hard. It was exciting and we grew a lot. So the thought to leave you with today is, is as a leader or all of you as leaders, uh, what can you do to appropriately use this pressure and tension to help improve performance and help people to grow so they can be a better version of themselves? So something to think about. The other side of it um, is the gratitude piece. So I was watching this uh, documentary, uh, actually interview with, with, a, with a, one of these guys who goes out and lives on the bush on his own for a long time. And he was in one of those reality TV shows that I actually think was actually a reality show um, versus a you know, stage soap opera. Uh, anyways, and, uh, but if you like those things, that's fine. But, but he just talked about being out in nature and what does it take when you're by yourself alone for months having to survive and he went on, and we hear it all the time, but usually it's sort of from more, you know, spiritual, lovely people. But he's this guy surviving in a bush, killing animals to survive. And he's like, gratitude's the most important. And he goes, because when you have gratitude for those things, you feel better and it puts you in the right mindset. So the thing I would put for you to think about is if you want to create that pain and pressure and leverage it, but then it's being grateful for it that allows you to embrace it and to be able to stay connected to it and get the benefit of it. So one of my collaborators, and again, I'm doing lots of work on my book right now. One of my collaborators and I were talking yesterday and she was going, yeah, you know, it's kind of like when you're at a wedding and, you know, you know, the, uh, Uncle Charlie or Aunt Betsy are wanting to drag you out on the dance floor when the polka comes on. I feel like you don't know what polka is. It's old music. I think it might use an accordion or something. But when the polka comes on and it's like awkward and it's not the music you might love and you don't want, you know, it might be embarrassing, whatever it is. And there's this resistance and you might get dragged up onto the dance floor. And, but once you start doing it, you have a darn riot. It's fun. And that's a lot of what happens in these situations that are tense for us is that when we're resisting them, they own us, they weigh us down. But yet when we embrace them and just decide we're gonna go have fun on the dance floor with a polka with Uncle Charlie or Aunt Betsy, all of a sudden everything, the situation's the same but we've gone from fighting it to like, okay, it is what it is. Let's make the best of it. And that's what I'll leave you with today. Final thought is recovery. I'm, you know, I've, I got pretty cooked over this COVID thing. We were working insane hours to help pivot with, with some of the work we're doing and with our clients. Uh, and it feels like we got this nice spot in the middle now where it's calmed down and you know, we're still prepared for whatever's gonna come in the future. But what do you have for recovery time? I know for me, I, I've got to block off some time for myself just to recover and rethink and kind of reset. Uh, and that's why, what is your summer recovery plan? You know, if you're, you know, and if you're you know, up in, in the Northern, if you're Southern Hemisphere, it's your winter recovering plan. But what are you gonna do to recover and to help your teams to recover? Kind of catch our breath while we can, get resorted out. And uh, we're kind of, yeah, I think it's important. For me, it's definitely important for me. It's a huge priority for me, but what do you need to do to recover so that you can come back and be ready to push lead, be grateful, and, 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 and kind of fill up your tank so you can push ahead. Have an awesome day. I hope things are going well in your world, and uh, reach out if we can assist at all. Hope to see you uh, at the end of the month at, um, at the Jim Collins event. All the best.